Hi, my name is Antti Heino and today I'm going to discuss about BERT and how to implement it in SAS via. And all the materials you will need to replicate this can be found online. Uh, the notebook can be found on our uh, DLPy GitHub page and the data can be also found uh, in the link you can see there. The pre-trained models uh, can be downloaded from Hugging Face and the original research paper you can find easily on Google. So what is BERT? BERT is a bidirectional encoder representation from transformers. Okay, but what is a transformer then? So transformer is two separate mechanisms. An encoder that reads text input and a decoder that produces a prediction for the task, for example, text generation. And BERT is used to generate only a language model, so we need just the encoder part. It is designed to understand bidirectional relationships from unlabeled text by examining left and right context in all layers. The pre-trained BERT model can be fine-tuned with just one additional output layer for a variety of tasks. And here you can see the uh, model architecture. And next we will go through how it works roughly. So the first part in the pre-training is the masked language model. And there, some words in each sentence are hidden from the model. So they are replaced with a mask token. And then the model tries to predict the original masked words based on the context provided by other non-masked words in each sentence. Then there is the next sentence prediction part where the model receives pairs of sentences as input and learns to predict if the second sentence in the pair is the real next sentence. And during training, 50% of the inputs are a pair in which the, the second sentence is the real next sentence in the original document, while in the other 50%, a random sentence from the corpus is chosen as the second sentence. And the goal of the pre-training step is to understand language by minimizing the combined loss uh, function of the two strategies. And then in the fine-tuning steps, the weights are tuned for a specific problem. The environment I will be using in this case is SASVIA 3.5. And we take advantage of the open source integration capabilities we have in the platform. And we use two packages, SWAT and DLPy, to achieve this. The SWAT package is used to create a connection between uh, VIA and the open source, open source interface we use, in this case, um, Jupyter Notebook. And then the DLPy package is used to um, uh, do the deep learning um, things um, and it offers a easy, easy to use um, code packages for, for the BERT architecture. All right, then more specifically about the, this notebook. So in this example, um, I will be doing natural language inference task that involves two sentences, a question, and uh, then a next sentence. And we want to predict whether the latter sentence contains an answer to the question. And here the term sentence refers to an arbitrary uh, span of contiguous text rather than actual linguistic um, sentence. So there are eight steps in the, in the notebook. So first we will import some packages and set some variables. 
Then we define the bird model. We load some training data and do some data prep. Then we load the weights to the model, train the model further with the data we have, load the test or actually the dev data, and then score new data through the trained model, and finally inspect the results. All right, so here you can see what kind of packages we need. Um, I just discussed some of them, um, but here's a, a list that I need to import. And maybe the ones I want to bring more attention to is the Transformers package and the DLPy package and the SWOT package that are especially needed in this case. Next, I'll set some variables. So I set the cache directory where I want to download the Hugging Face pre-train model. Then I will set up the, the connection to my via server. So I need the IP the port and my username and password to do that. I load the deep learning action set. And then I'm pretty much good to go. Then I just um, define the number of, of classes I have in the prediction. So in this case, it's either, either not not the answer to the question, or it is the answer to the question. So two classes. And then the number of encoder layers we want to use in the, in the BERT model. So the next step would be to define the model, uh, load the data and the weights. So here we download um, the model. From, from Hugging Face, so we download the bird base uncased version of the pre-trained model. And then um, we instantiate a version uh, of that model uh, by, by doing this one. So we set, set uh, the, um, the cache directory we, we just uh, used for, for downloading the model. We define the number of, of uh, layers, so that's the 12 encoder layers we want to use. And by that we, we define the model. Then we can um, read in the training data. And that we can just um, read in as a CSV file. Um, that's quite standard. Um, you just um, need to define the, the labels for the inputs. So we want to have a question and a sentence and then, then a label for the data. Then uh, we want to do some, some data prep um, just to transform the, the target to a numerical format. So either a two if it's um, if it's uh, if it's the answer to the question and one if it's not the answer to the question. So the next step would be to tokenize the data we have loaded. And you can do that by utilizing the BERT prepare data function. And it takes as inputs the question and the sentence, which are the input A and input B, and then the targets, um, obviously, as, as well. And this we just converted into, into lists in the previous step. And after running a while, the function will convert uh, or, or tokenize all the, all the lines in the data. And if we scroll down a bit, uh, you can see the format of the training table we, we created by, by the tokenization. So we have the tokens, the token positions, the segments, and the target. And let's, let's look, look at the actual data. So with this, this I can um, look at the individual observations. And here you can see what the data look, looks like after tokenization. And <clears throat> I think the most, most important thing here is to notice that 
some words have been split into smaller subwords and uh, different characters. And this is because the word vocabulary is fixed and the words that are not in the vocabulary um, are repre represented by the different subwords um, that are separated by the two hashtag characters. And you can see some of the examples here. For example, uh, the more um, rare terms perhaps are, are um, split up by, by the hashtags. So the next step is then to compile the model and attach the weights of, of the pre-trained model to that. And that's, that's done here. Um, and it's important to um, state if you want to freeze the base model weights or not. Uh, in this case, I don't want to freeze them. I, I want to fine-tune the, the weights uh, with this training data. So I specify uh, false in, in the freeze base model uh, parameter. And we can plot the network. Um, so after breaking the text into tokens, um, it is converted into a list of voc vocabulary indices. And these vocabulary indices um, are then converted into a vector of, of uh, 768 numbers, basically. And, and the network architecture you can, you can see here. So it's a quite, quite deep network. Okay, but at this point, we have been able to define the model. Um, we have loaded the weights, so we are ready for training. And that's the next step. So here is how you, you train the model. So we need to specify the optimizer parameters. In this case, I just specify the learning rate um, and then uh, the number of threads um, and the different specs. But I, I pretty much use the defaults here. And after a long, long time, so be careful, it will take a long time to uh, train a BERT model. Um, in this case, it trained um, more than a couple of days. But after that, it has finished and it looks quite good. So if you look at look at the fit error, it has decreased quite significantly significantly over the epochs here. All right, so everything looks good after training and we are ready to do some testing on, on the trained model. So for that we load a test set. Um, in this case I, uh, I use a, a dev set from the original data um, because it has also the, the right answers. Um, so I, I don't want to use an actual test set that doesn't have the right answers also. Um, so the data preparation steps are the same as they were for, for the training data. So reading the data from, from the CSV, um, defining the question, sentence and, and label um, inputs there, um, then converting those to, to lists and then tokenizing the date. So after that we can feed feed that data to, to the trained model and get some predictions. And it's as easy as specifying the predict function here and, and the correct data, so the test data. And here you can see the results. So our misclassification is uh, only around 9%, so quite good for a complex task like this. And uh, yeah, here you can see, see the results and also I, I show some of, the, some of the raw data here as well. So uh, this looks similar as, as for the training data. So I dis display some individual observations. And as you can see, the target, so the original uh, information about, about the question and sentence pair matches the predict, 
predicted um, a result in most of the cases. So there, there seems to be one, one that is misclassifi misclassified in this set of four observations. That's it. Um, that's how you use BERT models in SAS-Y. Thanks for watching.